Okay, they better be leaders. You want to build a $100 million sales team? You've got to have leaders. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy Elliott. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how we scaled our company to $100 million plus a year. So I'm calling this how to build a $100 million sales team. By the way, I'm going to tell you how to hire. I'm going to tell you about the management. I'm going to tell you about the systems and processes. During this entire video, I'm going to go from A to Z on what I do in my company. And by the way, I am living proof that you can build this and build it in a short matter of time. Now, by the way, I want to do this before we get started and I'll go through each one of these individually. So that's four different pieces. I want you to just do the math for a minute, okay? If you wanted to build a $100 million business and you wanted to have a sales team, let's just do some, some simple math. I have 100 people that work in my company, plus let's say there's 100, and let's say they're gonna work uh, 365 days a year, they're gonna take two days off, so that will leave them working 260 selling days. Does that make sense? 365 days in a year, if each person works 52 weeks in a year and they work five days per week, that's 260 days. Because remember, it doesn't matter how many days are in a year, it matters how many working days there are, how many working days your team is gonna work. So let's say I said five for some simple math, how much money would 100 people who work 260 days a year have to put up per day to hit 100 million? Easy. If they did 3,500 each per day and they work five days a week, which would give them the weekends to spend time with their family, they're taking a third of the year off so they're not getting burned out, they're not getting tired, and their purpose is staying high. Guess what happens? That's $91 million. There's your $100 million sales team. All right, now I'm going to tell you how to build it, but you got to do the math first. When I started my company back in 2019, well, number one, back from when I sold cars when I was 18 years old, I, I ended up averaging 70 to 80 cars a month where most people would sell 8 to 15. How did I do that? Well, I did the math. How many people did I have to talk to? What was the average gross per copy that I had to run? How many phone calls did I have to make? What was my non-negotiables each day? And then when I got into leadership, then I took a team of 30 people and I did the same thing that I did with me when there was one and I did it with 30 now. A leader, you get what you tolerate. A toleration, like what you tolerate, will determine the the, the growth of a company. So the greatest way to change any company is to change the psychology of the leader. The psychology of the leader will decide what is the max potential of this company? Like how big can we go? Always remember the quality of your life will always come down to the level of your leadership. In every organization, the chokehold, the choke, the growth where it stops is because of the leader, okay? Now, if you're a salesperson, you're watching this, okay? And I want you to understand this, you're your own boss, okay? And so if you're not growing, if you're not scaling, it's because you've stopped being innovative. You're probably not working as hard. You think you've maxed out what's possible. And guess what? Now you're dying to your own false beliefs. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, and that would be for a leader of a whole company. And so when I was young, when I was 18 years old, I got I got into sales and I started selling cars. The average guy sold between eight and 15. Um, I took it to 70 eight, to 80 cars a month. How did I destroy it and sell what most, it would take 15 people to sell 80 cars, but I was selling that with one person. Well, I did the math. How many phone calls do I got to make a day? How many customers do I got to talk to? So every day when I left, I checked all the boxes and I made sure I, I hit what I needed to hit. And, and by the way, this is what I do now in my company today, okay? And I want you to understand what kind of leader I am so you can understand if you want to build a $100 million sales team, like you're not just going to walk away and disappear because the trust of the organization comes from the leader, okay? And so if you're not going to be in your company, you need to make sure that you hire someone who's going to be in your company that these people will respect. And by the way, I will go over that with you in this. So let's get to the four key points that I want to teach you how to run a $100 million sales team. Okay, guys, let's start with number one. It's going to be hiring. Number one, you want to make sure that you hire people that you can give feedback to where they won't have an ego. These people have to be coachable. When you're going to hire somebody, say this, say, if I found out that you were doing something wrong, would you allow me to correct you? Would that be okay? Let me ask you a question. I know a lot of people that it seems like they're looking to be offended. And if you're looking to be offended, everything that everyone says offends you. Does that make sense? So in this company, we criticize each other a lot, but in a positive way. We call it positive peer pressure. Now, listen, this is during the hiring process. You always know what you have with someone when you piss them off, okay? So when someone comes in to ask for a job, I don't want to sell them on working for me. I want to tell them that this company is very special. Our, our culture took a long time to build. 
everything in this company. This is our chosen family. There's your blood family, your family, and then there's your chosen family. And most of the time in a, in a job or in a career, you actually spend more time with these people than you do with actually your own family. So it's really important who we're in proximity to who we spend our time with. Now, as I'm talking to you right now, I want to ask you a question. If I saw you doing something wrong, would you allow me to critique you? Because winners, they love to be criticized. They love to be critiqued. Winners look in the mirror and they own their stuff. It goes thumbs in, not fingers out. They don't give away the power to change something. They don't blame it on anyone else. Everything is your fault, good and bad. Does that make sense? So if I see you doing something, do I have to walk around on eggshells and not tell you because it's going to upset you and hurt your feelings? Or could I have permission to be direct with you if you worked here? And that is something that you have the skin to be able to tolerate and take that. Because in sales, I want you to understand something. We're after results, we're after winning, we're after taking care of our customers, and we're after culture and doing great. Sales is growth. And every single day, we're going to grow, we're going to reach for more. So we got to make sure that we're coachable and we grow so we can make sure that our clients that we work with, they're also coachable. We got to be the customers that we want our customers to be right? So if I'm sitting here and I see you doing something that isn't right, or maybe you're doing it wrong, are you going to allow me to critique you? Yes or no? Will it offend you? Does it upset you when people tell you that what you're doing isn't right or when you're doing something wrong? When somebody tells you you could do something better, do you say, yeah, but, or do you say, thank you so much for telling me I'm going to become uh, better now? Which is it? Guys, that's super important. That's going to be step one of hiring. Step two is gonna be don't hire people who sound like idiots. Make sure you hire people that actually can talk through things. Okay, let me explain what that means, all right? So a lot of people think that sales is like word tracks, role play, tonality, and body language, and it is all of that. <laughs> it's energy, it's transfer of emotion and state. But also at the end of the day, you gotta have someone who's not a dummy. They gotta be a little bit intelligent. They gotta be able to talk their way through a conversation. And I've noticed that a lot of sales companies, they hire bodies. Anybody that comes in that they're breathing, they'll go and they'll hire them. This is the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. If somebody can't, if you're interviewing someone, they should be able to talk their way through something. Okay, does that make sense? And by the way, those are the kind of people that you want to invest your time in. Those are the kind of people that in three years, you're going to look up and you're going to have a freaking rock star in your company. So anyways, don't hire dummies. I see a lot of sales companies that hire idiots. And why? Because they want to fill a position. That's the worst thing you can do. If you want to burn your business to the ground, go hire a bunch of people that aren't good with their mouthpieces, okay? But if you want to do great, remember this, the greatest salespeople are born, they're not made, but they have to be able to talk through conversations. All right, number three on hiring, hire people who will role play every single day. Listen, I'm gonna explain how this works. If I tell you to role play and you eye roll me in a meeting, it's because I didn't explain to you when I hired you that this is a standard in our company to role play. That's the boss's fault, man. Hey, look, you guys screwed up when you hired the person. Every single day, what we do is that we role play every morning. Guess what? We show up on time. We get here at 7 a.m. You're the first person to get here. And that's how it shows me that you care. And then when we come in, we're going to role play. We're going to go back and forth and wh whatever topic it is, we're not going to role play on like 30 different things every day. We may role play just on the intro, maybe the first 10 seconds. And we're going to role play on that for 30 minutes, just that 10 seconds. And then the next day we may do the same 10 seconds again, or I may go to the end or I may go somewhere in the middle, but I'll never have someone role play all over the place. So leaders, make sure you understand this. When you have your team role play, you don't role play A to Z, okay? Role play a portion of a job that they have to do so they can dial that in and that's how they get better faster. Does that make sense? But make sure and during the hiring process that you explain the standards and what you won't tolerate is that every day we're gonna train and get better. Don't wish it was easier, wish you were better, right? It's not about who you are, it's about who you're becoming. Every single day in this company, this is a hero making machine. Our job is to make you better, that's it. Okay, so we're gonna role play every day. Why? Because you're a public speaker. Whether you're talking to one or 10,000, you gotta be good at speaking. And most people in this world, they can't communicate. And I wanna work with people that are really good at communicating. How do we do that? We do that by role playing. Does that make sense? So make sure you set the standard up front that they're gonna role play every freaking day. All right, guys, number four, last one. Hire off standards, explain the culture. Look, I'm gonna explain this to you. The most dangerous thing that you can do is hire someone that literally comes in and they're like strychnine. One drop in a cup of coffee, one drop of strychnine in a cup of coffee will kill you. What does that mean? Your culture, the leader's job is to create a, 
a badass environment, to create an environment, again, a hero making machine in which everyone can be great in. And when people are in this environment, they wanna thrive, they wanna reach for more, they wanna do better. They brainwash themselves every day. They're contributors, they're not consumers. They go into the company and they say, man, what can I do for this company today? Not what can this company do for me? And so at the end of the day, when you're building this environment, when you're building this culture of people that have this certain belief and this certain standard, and there are a bunch of stallions, you can't bring in a turkey to run with stallions, okay? So you must explain the culture and you must ask, hey, here's a pen, here's a piece of paper, write down what are your core values, what are your standards? Look at them, and by the way, I'm gonna tell you, I'm like super tricky because I'll ask someone, hey, what are your core values, what are your standards, they'll write it down, and I'll say, um, today, when you drove here, um, is your car in the parking lot, yeah? Cool, come out here with me, let's go check it out. I wanna see how clean it is. That's all I want to do. I don't care what kind of car you drive. I want to see how clean it is. I want to see how you take care of your space. I want to see how you take care of your stuff. And if I walk out there and there's wrappers all in that car and it's all nasty, I'm going to tell you this, there's no way in hell I'm going to add more for my company. Hey guys, the culture is the most important thing in the world to take care of. You got to realize if you're going to hire someone, you're going to bring them into this culture that you've babied, you've taken care of, you've made sure you've protected it with all your life, like these are your children. And then you let someone else come in and they don't have all these standards. I'm going to tell you this. Number one, it shows everyone in your circle that you don't care about them anymore because you wouldn't let that person come in. Your hiring process, your goal as, as I hire someone, I'm basically talking them out of working for me, not talking them into working for me. I'm explaining to them that, listen, there's a good chance right here. We got a bunch of alphas in here. They're amazing that you're probably not going to be as good as you think you are when you come on board. Just being honest with you. Why would I say that? Because I want a fighter. I want someone that says, hey, listen, I love that. Matter of fact, I was looking to find a good company that I could level up in, you know, be great and be around great people. I like that. Thank you so much for that. Matter, matter of fact, that's exactly what I was looking for. But if somebody's like, well, if you don't believe in me, then I guess I'm not going to be here. Get that guy out of there. Are you kidding me? There's 9 billion people in this world. Don't hire idiots like that. Okay. So guys, this hiring section, if you just listen to what I just talked about, this will change your game. Hey guys, if you're looking to take your life to the next level, whether it's you're making a lot of money right now, but you just look in the mirror and are not really happy with who you are and you're like, man, I'm missing my edge. For some reason, I've got the achievement, but I don't have the fulfillment. Or maybe you're sitting there watching this and I'm teaching some education and you're like, dang, man, you know, I'm not hitting those numbers either. Whether you're a sales guy coming up, whether you're a manager or general manager and you run a company and you're the leader or you're the business owner, all right? I own my company and every day I coach and I train over 500,000 people around the world but I'm looking to do some one-on-one -on -one coaching with people who really want to become the world's greatest leaders, earn the most money, and have the art of achievement and the art of fulfillment. I put a link below in the description box. It's very easy. It's going to ask you eight questions. This guy's going to ask for your name, your phone number, and your email. And if you answer these questions and I look at it and I feel like you're the right person that I can spend my time with to scale and grow you, I'm looking to change the world with the greatest leaders. If you think that that's you, fill that out. And if you apply and you qualify, I'll reach out to you in the next 24 hours. All right, guys, so we're going to talk about the next one, which is management. Now, management's a big one for me because I actually don't like the word management, but I use that because I know a lot of companies have managers. Now, before I go into this real quick, I want to explain my company real quick, okay? And then I want to go to yours. Number one, there's me and my wife, Jack and Elliot and me, and I have 100 people underneath us. All 100 of these people are all leaders. Okay, let me rephrase this again. I don't have a manager. I build leaders. They're all leaders, every one of them. When they hire, I say, let me ask you a question. Do I gotta hire a manager to babysit you? Or are you full grown adult and you can take care of yourself? Just answer me, because every day, do I gotta be on you? Do, I got, do you need a babysitter? Do I need to hire you a babysitter? No, okay, cool, that's all I need. I need a gentleman's agreement that you're gonna come in here, you're gonna give all you got. When you kiss your kids and wife goodbye and you come into work, you're gonna empty the tank and give all you got. Can you do that for me? Okay, cool, because I'm not gonna go waste money on someone to come manage you and check in on your numbers. You're gonna do your job, you're gonna display your numbers. The numbers are on the board every day, the results are seen 25, seven, 365. Everything's gonna be there and you're gonna come in here and you're gonna be accountable and you're gonna push yourself. Now, I'm gonna do a good job of being a leader and holding a standard in the company, but I'm not gonna hire someone to babysit them. So number one, you gotta write this down. People work for a manager for a paycheck. Okay, they work for a manager for a paycheck. And I got it, if you got a manager in your company, you got all these people, I get, that's fine. But they better be a leader, okay? They better be a leader. You want to build a $100 million sales team? You've got to have leaders. Why? Step one is leadership, self-leadership. The way that someone leads themselves will determine if they're okay to lead anyone else. So if you can't lead yourself, you're not going to lead anyone else. No one else is going to want to be led by you, okay? By the way, 
Write this down, mentorship. People will work for their mentor over money every freaking day. I get 100 DMs a day, every day. Somebody says, Andy, I'll come work for you for free. Let me come work for you for two or three years for free. How many people want to come work for you for free? Okay, be the greatest leader, man. I'm telling you, dude, we're in an era right now. People ask me, Andy, what's the greatest organization where I can go work? What's the greatest leader I can go work for? I want to become great. I know the product, the proximity is a way to get it done. Okay, so listen to me. So people will choose their mentor over money. So make sure, I'm just giving an example. There's 100 people on my team. And if I called them all into a meeting and I handed them all a piece of paper and I told them to write down the name of their mentor on a piece of paper, bet your ass all of them would have my name on it. I have done it. It's there. I make sure that I mentor them. I coach them. I am literally their professional coach. I brainwash them to believe that they can do anything in the world. I literally will tell you the world is tainting your team's brain. It's your job to wash their brain and brainwash them that they're powerful, that they're strong, that their mindset matters, that they're the gatekeeper to their mind. And if they let anything in it, it's because they've allowed it. Okay. Who is their coach? It should be you. And if it's not you, you must put someone like this in charge of these people. So these people can believe because what controls your mind is how your life goes. Okay. And by the way, most people aren't in charge of the mind. Someone else is or the world is. Okay. We're going to tell our people that everything, our greatest responsibility in life, everything is up to us. Our greatest responsibility in life is to control our mind and control our thoughts. So that's leadership. Number one, number one step one is self-lead. Step two is once you self-lead, then you'll be able to lead others. Okay. What does that mean? Self-lead, step one. Then step two is going to be, now we're going to lead others. And then step three is building leaders that build more leaders. Dang, now he's got a whole company in leaders. You see what I'm saying, guys? This is how this rolls. All right, so super important. I put here, hardest worker in the room. This is a big one to me. You must be the hardest worker in the room. You can't ask your team to be something you're not. You can't ask them to do something you're not doing, and you can't give them something you ain't got. Does that make sense? You gotta be the hardest worker in the room. Also, no double standards, okay? You hear me? Don't be a barstool warrior sitting on your ass going to tell your team to work, okay? Listen to me, get on the phone with them, make calls with them, show them you care, be on the front line, help them grind through problems. By the way, I will say this one time and I will only say this once, and this is the greatest thing that you'll ever learn from me. If you wanna build loyalty in your team, hey, it's cool to be there with them when they're cashing big ass checks and they're having fun. But if you can be there with them when they're suffering, going through trouble and having a hard time, it's during those times that loyalty is created when they're suffering. Just never forget that. A real leader will be with their team when they're going through a hard time. Okay, I tell my team, I don't care what you're going through. If you go through something hard, I better be the first person I know. I want to go through it with you. That's how I roll. All right, so one more. Who's in charge of the culture? You are. Who creates the environment? You do. And then, by the way, lastly, people got to want to look up to you. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Does your entire team want to be like you? Do they want to have a marriage like you have with your wife or your husband? Do they want to have be great parents like you are to your kids? Um, do they want to be close to God like you are to God? Do they want to be fired up and stay in a state and have tons of energy like you do all day long? You know, do they are you physically fit? Do they want to look like you? Um, you know, do they want to talk like you? Do they want to sell like you? I'm going to tell you this: If you're going to run a sales team, you better be the best damn salesperson on the team. If you're going to run a sales team, you better be the best closer in the damn country. Okay, you can't look. You're not going to run. You're not going to be a C-string leader and freaking run A-string players. It ain't gonna happen, okay? It ain't gonna happen. And this is why leadership skills is so important. And so this is, I call it management, right? But this is the real definition of building an army is becoming a leader. All right, guys, so number three, I mean, this is gonna be short and easy. Scaling, how do you scale? Number one, have a leaderboard present 25-7-365. Have a freaking leaderboard present. Everybody in the company needs to be able to see everyone else's numbers. Okay, so what does that mean? If I got 100 guys in my company, I wanna know who's first, I wanna know who's last. The guy at the bottom is working his way to the top, and the guy that's on the top is fighting like hell to stay on the top. And by the way, if somebody wins, the next month it starts back over at zero, right? So now it's a free playing field. But that, that top guy, now the guy at the bottom, don't wanna be at the bottom anymore, and the guy at the top, he may be getting comfortable, so now that guy's coming up. I want everybody to see the switching of hands and players all through the month. 31 days, whatever, how many days are in a month. I want to see that happening. I want to see each day people switching and changing. I want to see if somebody has a bad day that they saw that the other 99 people, if there were 100 in a company, uh, also saw it. If somebody had a kick-ass day and they smashed it, 
I need everybody to see they had a kick-ass day. Do you guys feel me? Okay, so if you want to scale, if you want to grow, right? KPIs, all these things, have the leaderboard present. All numbers, full disclosure for everyone all day. All right, training process. This is going to be the last one. So training process for me, we do it every morning. We knock the dust off each other for about 30 minutes every morning. I've told you we pick a little piece and then that's what we're going to work on for 30 minutes. We're not running a full script. That's not how we do it. Also, I want you to understand something. If your clients knew everything that you guys knew, they would buy. All of our jobs is as salespeople and closers is to keep the client's goals at the center of the decision. Okay, so who are your clients? It's not what product do we have, right? Our product's good. And if we have a good product, it'd be disrespectful to not close everybody on it. Because if we didn't sell it to someone, they could stay the same, they can continue to struggle, or they could end up worse at the competition across the road. And that would be stupid, right? So you need to make sure that your people understand it's not product knowledge, it's people knowledge. And if you understand people, you gotta understand what do people want help with? What's the problem they wanna solve? If we solve little problems, we get little commissions. If we solve big problems, we get big commissions, okay? So we need to keep the client's goals. What are their goals? Why did they come in? Why did they make this phone call? Why did they show up today at the showroom? Why do we have these people in front of us? Or why did they request some information on our product? Because they have a problem. So our goal is to take their problem and take what their goals are. And then when we ask them to make a decision, we just keep their goals at the center of that decision. Guys, selling and closing is so easy. Okay, building a hundred million dollar sales team, I'm I'm building a billion dollar sales team. I don't care what industry you're in, if you're in roofing, if you're in solar, if you're in a uh, home service space, it doesn't matter to me, HVAC, I, I don't care what you do. I don't care if you're in SaaS, I don't care if you're in tech, I, it really doesn't matter to me, automotive, it doesn't matter if you're in sales or if you're running a team or if you own a company. If you guys need help, make sure you know there's always going to be a link below. If you're a serious player, right? How do I know if someone's serious? Number one, they take action when they have something good in front of them. And number two, urgency. When I want to do something, I take action quick, all right? And super important, I want, I want, to, I want to just say something. Let's play this out, okay? You know where you're currently at right now. If I've given you some tips during this video and you saw how I built a $100 million plus sales team and on my way to a billion, if you've seen that, let me ask you a question. What's the missing piece to your game? What's the missing piece of the puzzle? What's the strategy? What's the missing piece to your edge? If you guys would like me to help you, make sure you go down to the link. You're gonna see a little description box. You're gonna answer about eight questions. Fill out your information. I'll reach it out to you. If you qualify, if it's something that I feel like I can really help you, I'll reach out to you in the next 24 hours. Guys, I love you. Make sure you share this video with somebody who needs it. If you didn't understand it, go back and watch it a hundred more times. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video.